Laylatul Qadr, the night of degree, decree rather, or night of power, is one of the most sacred nights in the Islamic calendar that takes place in the last 10 days of Ramadan and was the night in which the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is a night of great reward and significance as believers are encouraged to devote themselves to the worship of Allah who has placed it higher in virtue than a thousand monks. This shall be a focus and panorama from the studios of NTME Duguri this afternoon. I am Abu Bakr Musa. <music> President Bola Tinibu is beaming with new assurances that with the new economic trajectories, Nigeria is poised to succeed soon enough for the ultimate benefits of the citizenry. The president yet again renewed the hope of Nigerians when he hosted members of the business community in the country to an iftar breaking of fast at the State House. State House correspondent Musbao Dongwahab has more. A seasoned businessman in the midst of familiar faces, warm pleasantries and mutual respect were in order. Another gathering in the spirit of a season, but the underlying reason is perhaps even greater with the array of captains of industry on their roof here. These are part of the holders of the economy and big-time employers of labor. And so, beyond the feast, the guests saw the new signs to believe in the genuineness of this man's intention to rebuild the nation's economy. We know the journey is not going to be smooth initially, but given the way you're handling it, we know we we'll get to the promised land. We love your courage. We love your boldness. We admire your decisiveness. And these are very critical in transforming the business as in transforming the country. What we've done is to show statesmanship you are thinking of Nigeria, not of Nigeria of today, but Nigeria also of the future. Now we have an administration and a presidency that is interested in the opinion of the people that they are there to govern. But I think what you have done in context of driving reforms, necessary reforms, allowing us to have access to, to forex and to, to operate, we believe in the rightness of the His foot soldiers, too, also reported on recent policies to further ensure a more conducive business climate. We are on our way to a plan-based governance led by Mr. President with initiatives designed to quickly and urgently support manufacturing, support agriculture, support mining support creative arts and economy, blue economy, all those areas where given the right attention that they are getting now can absorb hundreds of billions of dollars of investment and support our quest for double digit growth. Thank you. But for the captain of the team himself, it is hope on ending imbued with confidence assuring that Nigeria is already descending the challenging hills of the economy occasioned by policies for better prosperity. Nigeria is a self-believer and can always deliver on its own. Whatever, you know, they call us in the past, we know our first name and our last name. Our first name is Spirit. Our last name is Kandu. Banking on the Kandu spirit of Nigerians, the president equally expresses belief in the partnership with the private sector to take Nigeria higher. It's very, very inspiring to move on, cut the cost, twist the bend. Summon courage and behave rightly. Save the money but push the economy. We will be there. There are some countries 
that have failed. There are some countries that have succeeded. But in your time, in our time, in my time, all of us must work together to succeed. Thank you very much. And from the indications emanating from here, this is just the beginning of gathering of this nature to find the right and enduring direction for Nigeria's economic prosperity. From the State House, Muspao and Wahab, NTN News. Minister of State for Youth Development, Ayodele Olawande, has commended President Bola Ahmed Tinibu for strengthening student loans bill with new inclusions to cover initially excluded student groups and by giving quick assent to the bill. Olawande, in a statement, noted that by assenting to the Student Loans Act, President Tinibu has shown that he is not just talking about investing in the future, but also committed to making it happen. While encouraging young people to take advantage of the opportunity, the minister added that with this development, the future of Nigeria looks bright, as the law is a game changer in the nation's educational system. He further stated that the law will go a long way to open up a world of opportunities for all Nigerian students and young people looking to pursue higher education. The minister said, and I quote, this new law creates the Nigeria Education Loan Fund, NEL Fund, to support students financially so they can study without worrying about tuition and other school-related expenses. To every young person willing to dream and aspire, this law is your invitation to step up, get educated, and contribute to the growth and development of our dear nation. He, however, pledged that the Ministry of Youth Development will work closely with NEL Fund to ensure that the law is effective and that the youth of Nigeria derive maximum benefits that will aid their quest for quality education. Let's talk security now. Proper awareness on the implementation of the whole of society security strategy is critical to ensuring timely support from the citizens to the military. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tariq Lagbaja, stated this at the 2024 annual COAS lecture series in Abuja. To war, not only because, uh, it's the maiden edition of the Chief of Army Staff lecture at the Nigerian Army Resource Center Abuja with focus on the role of the military in the protection of Nigeria's national interests and security. For the adoption of the Funding gaps and inadequate manpower are among challenges the Army Chief believes are surmountable. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's assenting to the Daikon Act is the right step in the right direction. However, given the number of positive issues covered in the Act, from the involvement of the private sector and taxing of all defense contracts to raise funds, implementation must be given the impetus it deserved. His views resonate among other speakers at the event. What are we faced with today? Insecurity. It keeps getting better and then it goes bad, then it gets better and so on and so forth. Not until we achieve an environment of peace that greater things can happen. This particular program is meant to look at the national issues. And that's why we're starting with the chairman of the Board of Trustees. Let him look at the roles of the armed forces in national security and national interest. I want to assure you all that President Ahmed Bola Tinembu is passionate about the development of security in our nation. And he will definitely do his best to work on those challenges so mentioned today. Streamlining multi-agency collaboration in combating security challenges is critical as government is adopting a whole-of-society approach to tackle security issues. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. What have to do with security will continue to preempt criminal activities, disrupt their illicit networks, and apprehend perpetrators swiftly, says the Inspector General of Police. This is the resolution at the Nigeria Police Force Strategic Managers Conference for the second quarter of 2024 held in Abuja. Francis Form will now tell us more. It is another Strategic Managers Conference of the Force for second quarter of 2024. The meeting is to review force operational activities in the first quarter 
assess the impact on the nation's internal security and fine-tune their courses of action and strategies towards achieving a better civil space going forward. Let us continue to stand united in our resolve to uphold the principles of integrity, professionalism, and excellence in all our endeavors. IGP Kayode Egbetokun at the conference reel out some of the achievements of the force in the last eight weeks. The Nigerian police force arrested 3,685 suspects for their participation in various crimes. 401 kidnapped victims were rescued, 216 various firearms, 3,301 ammunition, and 82 vehicles were recovered. The abduction and killings of six police operatives during a special operation at Evil Forest in Ugeli North local government area of Delta State, the welfare of police personnel and the use of PR tools in policing were on the front burner for deliberation. Similarly, the force assured of its determination to remain vigilant and adaptive in its approach while continuously refining its strategies to remain ahead of evolving threats. Francis from NTA News. You're on to Panorama on the Nigerian Television Authority. Let's take a break here. More reports for you shortly. You are still on to Panorama. Let's move on now. Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, is a specific night in Ramadan that avails every Muslim closer to Allah due to its essence, bounty, and reward. Zainab Adam completes the story. It is only in the month of Ramadan that Muslim faithful are opportuned to search for the powerful night, which occurs once in a year and is more worthy than 1,000 months. The night of power, also called the night of majesty, is a night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees what will happen for the next year. According to various hadiths, its exact date is uncertain, but it is one of the odd numbered nights of the last 10 days of Ramadan, often searched on 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th or 29th day of Ramadan. The Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said whosoever that worships Allah and prays during the night of Laylatul Qadr, his previous sins will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alayhi salatu wa salam told Umna Aisha that you should say Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afuwa fa afu anna. O Allah, you are the most forgiven. You like forgiving your servants. Oh Allah, forgive me. Good deeds like seeking Allah's forgiveness, mercy, and giving out charity are encouraged during the last 10 days of Ramadan. In Maiduguri, Zainab Adam, NTA News. The annual observance of Laylatul Qadr holds additional significance as a night in which angels descend to earth with myriad of tasks, leading to a night of peace, blessings, and divine guidance until dawn. Thus, commemorated with solemnity, devotion, and prayer, among others. To shed more light on the significance of the night of power is the lead Imam, Imam Ibrahim Mosque, Shatima Jafar Imam. Sir, we are happy you have joined us on Panorama today. Assalamu alaikum and thank you. Wa alaikum as All right, uh, Chief Imam, or Imam Rada, tonight is the 27th night of the last 10 days of Ramadan. How strategic is this night? Wa well, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah for this great opportunity because not every servant is opportune to witness these days of Ramadan. And today happens to be the last Friday and within the 10 days, the last 10 days of Ramadan and it's the 26th day and then we are going to witness the 27th night today. Uh, the night of power or night of honor, Laylatul Qadri, is mentioned in the Quran 97, Surah Al Qadr. The revelation of Quran started in the night of Laylatul Qadri and then is better than thousands nights. Khairun min al Fishar. And then within the night, the number of angels that will descend 
is uncountable. And then the Prophet of Islam said, it is more than the sun particles. Automatically, they are going to cover the entire world, the entire earth. So they will stay until the next Fajr. And within that night, they will be amongst all those who are doing the act of worship. There are people who will observe the nafila, that is uh, supplementary prayers. There are those that are reciting the Quran. There are those that are doing tasbih, sending salutations to the Prophet. There are those that are seeking forgiveness of Allah. All those people are going to be amongst the angels that will be same on that very night. Uh, the Prophet of Islam has said that Man kama laylat al-qadr iman wa tisaban Wufira lahuma taqaddama min zambi Whoever stands in prayers during the night of laylat al-qadr with the hope of getting reward from Allah with his strong faith all his past sins are forgiven. So for that reason, the Prophet of Islam, when the last 10 days reaches, then we will just observe the whole nights with a strong debauch, tighten his, uh, uh, his apron, and then keep on praying for the whole nights. And then encourages his own family, wakes them up, and then they be part of the praying and then doing some uh, solitude to the, uh, uh, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anybody that is opportune to be blessed with this night, all his sins are forgiven. Nana Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, asked the Prophet, if I'm opportune and blessed with the night, Laylatul uh, Qadri, what kind of prayer will I offer? The alayhi salatu wasalam said, Kuli, Allahumma inna ka afun to hibul afa fa fa anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiven. You love to forgive. For forgive me. So with this prayer, any Muslim that is opportune to be uh, part of this night, his sins, all his sins are forgiven. The Prophet Ali Salat was said, the Haram Laylat al Qadri, fill with it. Min min Ramadan. Search for the last night, the Laylat al Qadri night, within the odd numbers of the last ten, uh, last ten days of Ramadan. So it may either be on the twenty first, or twenty third, or twenty fifth, or twenty seventh, or twenty ninth. Uh, okay, are there signs to which be believers should watch out for this night? Yeah, there are a lot of signs that you can see, but it's more spiritual because you are only expected to observe that night, sleepless that night. Don't sleep and they keep awake and they until the next azan for the last night. So there are signs that you can see, uh, like uh, the world itself, you can see a lot of changes. There are signs that will tell you that uh, it's a night that uh, you can see even the atmospheric uh, temperature there are a lot of uh, signs that you can see like uh, the world itself is uh, a bit uh, illuminated these are some of the signs that you can see but not all people will be opportune to see this kind of signs and then those who are observing the prayers, those who are standing on prayers, those who are doing the tasbih, those who are reciting the Quran, those who are just working, are the ones who will observe this night. Whatsoever, all Muslims are expected to be part of this night. And then for you to do that, you have to stay awoken and then recite the Quran or do a lot of uh, prayers within that very night. Shatima Jafar Imam, lead Imam. Imam Ibrahim Mosque in Maiduguri. We appreciate you so much for your contributions Thank you. Uh, to Panorama today, especially for talking to us on the significance of Laylatul Qadr, that's the night of power. Thank, Thank you once Thank again. You very much. Let's move on. Borno State Police Command has continued to achieve significant breakthroughs in combating crimes in the state as it has recently apprehended and paraded suspects involved in illegal mining, kidnapping, and culpable homicide. Umar Jambarima was there.
Briefing journalist, Commissioner of Police Yusuf Muhammad, represented by the Public Relations Officer Kenneth Dasu, said notable among the recent successes is the interception of legal arms as well as arrested suspects engaged in illegal mining. According to him, the command also seized 70 bags of suspected monoxide substance. Additionally, a disturbing discovery of a hacked body buried in a shallow grave at Jitari Pulu was part of the success stories by the command. Police detective of GRA police station visited the scene and exhumed the body, which was further taken to the State Specialist Hospital Meduguri for autopsy. While on the 25th of March, the Nigerian Police Bono State Command recovered a breakthrough, which led to the arrest of one Ibrahim Mohammed, who confessed to have conspired with his master, one Usman, who is still at large, and one Mustafa Modu, a laborer who dug the shallow grave where the body was buried. He also shed more light on the achievements made by the command to include arrest of kidnappers by police crack squads in Meiduguri and the investigation into a culpable homicide case reported by the chief security officer of the University of Meiduguri. Commissioner of Police Yusuf urges the citizens of Borno State to continue to be law abiding as police in collaboration with other security agencies remain committed to ensure safety and security for all in Meiduguri. Borno State Government has reiterated commitment to improving education and condition of government-sponsored nursing students in the state. Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, Lon Abu Kilbi, gave the assurance when he inspected College of Nursing Sciences in Meduguri. Pauline Kujivana completes the story. Commissioner of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, along with the Special Advisor on Higher Education and Executive Secretary Scholarship Board, among others, visited the College of Nursing Science in Meduguri, which operates under the Ministry of Health, to assess the learning and accommodation conditions of the about 1,000 students being sponsored by the state government. The provost of the college, Ruka Yashitima Mustafa, Brief the Commissioner on the achievements, prospects and challenges faced by the institution since its establishment in 1971 and highlighted the impressive performance of its graduates both within and outside the state. The Commissioner of Education pledged to provide the necessary support to the college, aligning it with the assistance extended to other tertiary institutions in the state. It is usually the mandate of the Ministry and that of the Scholarship Board to check on its students that are state-sponsored. Complaints have come from all over that there is shortage of medical workers in our respective communities, particularly outside the state. Subsequently, the commissioner taught the classes with the provost, interacting with the students and encouraging them to prioritize the academics while assuring them of monthly stipends in addition to the scholarships aiming to serve in their local communities upon graduation. The students are happy, they are going to learn, and they have accepted to go back and work in their respective communities. His Excellency came up with this uh, idea that we should select people from their communities and sponsor them for nursing courses. With this development for nursing students aiming to enhance personnel in the health sector amidst the resettlement drive of the government, IDP's health-related challenges will be addressed. In Meduguri, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. That's panorama for today from NTA Meduguri Zona Network Center. And from the whole team here is do have a lovely weekend.